All right, so here's my uh, my little rig. You can see that. No, oh, that slid. All right, if you can see that gauge back there, it's about 11, 11 inches of mercury. So that's no good. I thought I'd do something a little different this time. I'm going to show a bunch of different unusable parts for various reasons. And I don't know if this, if this proves useful to anybody. Maybe I'll do a few more. But for now, here's four items that cannot be reused. Let's start with the, with the easy ones here. So this is the low reverse apply piston this is the f6 style so it would use lip seals not the square cut seals this one has a hairline crack here you can see uh, right here it doesn't go all the way around the whole thing it's only across the bottom but it's all the way through so this this unit had uh burnt lower reverse frictions so this is something that if you ever spot that you'd want to take a closer look at this piston to see if there was any kind of cracking due to that that level of heat this would not pass an air check if you put it in so as long as you're air checking you'd catch that but you do want to catch these things visually and i know they're disgusting when you pull them out they're covered in all kinds of crap but um once you clean it off this i don't know how it's going to look on the camera but in person this this hairline is very obvious so just a just an eyeball inspection would would catch that um, next here is a stripped forward drum you can see uh, you can see inside here this is the partial splined version this is usually accompanied by a blown out center shaft roller bearing ball bearing but not always um, the difference is here when the center shaft engages it engages in this direction so I really don't understand why Ford stopped doing this it's really just I, I don't know it probably even cost them money to not to no longer do this but these extra splines the extra length of splines would absolutely engage the center shaft you know and it would just offer it more than 50% more spline engagement so I really don't know why they why they changed that up but this is also not usable well this just in i was out tearing down a core another core and i came across another forward drum with no splines in it before when i made this video i didn't have the rest of the parts because they're already been processed and they've already moved along in life that drum had just been sitting around for a while so i decided to make a video out of it and then get rid of it um so today, in the back of my mind, I knew this video was going to post today. So I thought, hey, why don't I just add a little clip and splice this in there and I can show you exactly what's going on and why this happens. So normally, you got your center support and your center support hub. They're usually bolted together. And inside the transmission, it sits on top of the forward drum just like that. The center shaft, which is hardened steel, passes through the hub and engages with the splines of the soft cast forward drum. So notice I'm saying soft cast and hardened steel. That makes a difference. So what's going on in there? Well, the center support wears. And as the center support wears, as you can see this one here, this is pretty bad. This is probably 30 thousandths, I'd say, maybe, maybe even more. But as that wears out, this thing starts doing that as if that's doing that then the center hub is also doing that well inside the center hub is a ball bearing this one doesn't have it because it was blown to pieces and that supports the center shaft so as this is all being jerked around in there the center shaft is now wobbling like this the center shaft is now taking the soft forward drum for a ride with it you have all this extra loading going on in there and what happens is this bearing is going to blow up and when that bearing blows up it may not it doesn't happen all the time that's why i said this this is most of the time this happens but the bearing doesn't have to break 100 percent of the time but if it does it only increases the displacement and it probably all happens simultaneously it would be very very quickly once this bearing broke that that would wipe out these splines but 
what you have now is you have a wobbly hardened steel center shaft rotating a soft steel forward drum that's being supported in other ways. So you have all this extra loading going on. Well, as this thing is wobbling and rotating, you're causing all kinds of uneven forces, uneven loading against those splines. They crack, they break, and then once they're small enough, the rest of them just strip out. And it all gets pulverized right there by the center shaft. You'll find pieces of the ball bearing, but not the splines. And that's what happens. This transmission was a recent rebuild by an unknown builder, and he did not machine the center support. You could even buy a machine center support, but you, this is why this is critical. You have to do that. Otherwise, you wind up with much bigger problems. Now, if this happened to you, you have options. If you've got stock power, you don't need the, the $800 forward drum. You don't need that at all. You'll be fine with another stock drum. You could upgrade to the full spline version, but you know that's not necessary either. What is necessary is getting a machine center support and getting a new bearing for your center hub, and then you won't have this problem. Now back to the video. When this happens, you don't you lose forward and reverse. There's no way to repair this. This thing is just absolutely scrap. Um, let's do this in a second. For now, let's go to the uh, this torque converter cover. So this is a this is a four stud torque converter cover from an IDI. So this is from a 7.3 IDI truck. Now this is a really old one. It's, it's probably you know early early 90s, and this is when they were all single clutches. There were no doubles and triples yet. So this is a factory OEM stamp front cover. Notice it's just it's got smooth sides. The 4R100, those OEM converters have what they call groped sides. You'll see these vertical lines running all the way around. They're actually kind of like, you know, it, it's almost it's not flat. You can actually feel them. Um, that's what they call groping. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a triple clutch because there's there's still single doubles and triples inside of a, a groped torque converter. Just last week I had literally two 2001 excursions and both are OEM. OEM converters never been open, factory welds, you know, whole nine yards, groped front covers, and they both had double clutch torque converters. I haven't gotten around to filming any a whole lot of torque converter stuff yet to prove this stuff, but I know people think that just because they have grope size that they're triples. So anyway, what happened here? Well, if you look inside, you can see these four dark spots, which are exactly right behind each of the four studs. So the reason for that is is the, the deflection. This, this stamp cover, it's thinner. So when you rebuild these, you cut this surface down. So we cut through the black, but because this is an older thin one, there's really not much there. Uh, there's not really any material going to be left. So if we did machine it, it would just cause more premature heating and we would wind up with something like this again in a much shorter time than it did for this truck. So in the old days, before there were billet covers, they would weld thick steel rings around here, around this outer flat. And the rings would have four holes cut in them for each of these pads. And they would just weld them to there. And that's how they firmed up the front covers. Then eventually Sonax started making machined front covers out of, out of solid, solid chunks of steel. And that started the whole craze for billet front covers. The other thing you got to watch out for is the stud length. This is the short stud length. So this would be good for the one piece flex plate, which anyone with a power stroke would recognize that's a one piece flex plate. But some of these older trucks had two piece flex plates. They had a really thick steel casting in the middle of them and these studs would pass through it. So if the studs were short, it would be a big pain in the ass to get them aligned and get the nuts on and everything. So normally on a two piece, you would want uh, the long stud, which is it doesn't have more threads. It's just got it's just got another quarter inch Unthreaded pilot sticking out to help you with the uh, help you with the alignment So there's a little 
some little uh, the more you know about billet covers. Now this line pressure modulator when I check these I check them twice. I check them as is just an assembly with the plunger and the sleeve and then if it passes then I'll test it inside the, the body to see how the sleeve to body seal holds up. So this one didn't pass this initial test um, which is just the the seal of the uh, you know how close the plunger is to the to the sleeve. Now the way I do that is I have just a piece of this is just three quarter inch hose. I cut down a uh, aluminum disc inside and, and drilled a hole in it. So when I do this, now I'm sealed to the sleeve. I can apply vacuum across here, and because I have that disc in there. It's not going to, the vacuum isn't going to pull the plunger out. It's going to actually hold the plunger in there so I can read, read the uh, vacuum reading on that. If, if that weren't there, the vacuum would just suck the plunger right out. So let's do it, see what it looks like. All right, so here's my, uh, my little rig. You can see that. Oh, that slid. All right, if you can see that gauge back there, it's about 11, 11 inches of mercury. So that's no good. When these things are new, they're more like 25 or even more. Um, so 11 means we're getting a lot of leakage through the oiler hole and then out and around the plunger. So we're gonna, we're gonna have less pressure applied to the piston. That's, that's gonna apply less force against this spring. That's going to allow for this, uh, for the modulator valve to go to the right, and then you know we're going to have all kinds of of unexpected shifting experiences. So this will be trash. So anytime these don't pass vacuum, and you got to come up with your own acceptance criteria on the on the vacuum gauge. But this was well below mine. Uh, this would be replaced by a brand new one.